Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times, and I'm Aditi Prasad. And with me once again to, is, uh, is the paper's editor in chief, Sukumar Ranganathan. Uh, Sukumar, the interim government of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan is likely to take oath of office on September 11th. The day also marks the 20th anniversary of the 9 11 attacks in the US in 2001. There's huge symbolism there, and if irony was there, of course, he just died. That's true, uh, and uh, it's it's symbolic in a very uh, tragic sort of way, right? I mean, uh, it, it would have been good if it had been symbolic in a positive sort of way, uh, but uh, it's almost like 20 lost years, right? I mean, um, uh, and I still remember uh, a decade ago or, or even before that, Time magazine had this cover which spoke about the end of the Taliban, of how the Taliban are now like gone. And, and you know, mm. 20 years after 9-11, uh, they're back, right? And, and, and it, it's pretty much the same Taliban that is back. Um, I, I think the symbolism of this will especially not be lost in the US. Um, where, uh, sure, I, I think their domestic constituency is still not unhappy with what is happening. Because uh, uh, truth be told, um, the U.S., despite wanting to be the world's most influential uh, power and, and for a long time being the world's most influential power, uh, most people in the U.S. are, are very insular. Their worldview is, is very limited, um, and especially, um, you know, ordinary people. In, in fact, many of them will, will probably not even know a lot about countries like India. You, you, you ask them, what is Bombay famous for, or what you know? Uh, so uh, I just think that insularity will save them domestically, but globally their reputation has taken a huge beating. Uh, there's already talk of how uh, the Chinese are now the equal of the U.S. when it comes to being a global power and a global influence. It, it's something that uh, China is definitely not going to lose this opportunity. They're going to uh, try and leverage it to the extent possible. Uh, so it it is. And, and that will worry U.S. lawmakers, right? Because you, you are, your uh, commercial success uh, in many ways help you become, and, and your innovativeness help you become a global power, help you become the world's most influential country. And, and over a period of time, the fact that you were the world's most influential country sort of kicked back into the loop and, and, and helped you economically. Uh, and, and so many other ways, and, and I think that is taking a beating now. So uh, uh, it's interesting, uh, and like I said, it's, it's tragic because 9/11 uh, uh, exposed the world to a problem that India has been facing for much longer, right? And, and, and in many ways, this this is an issue about which uh, in, in India has been trying to. Uh, I mean, 9/11 was when the world sat up and took notice, but but. India has been the target of terror for longer than that. And, and, and I think uh, India has been trying to make this point. And, and, and we are back where we started pretty much. I refuse to buy the argument that, uh, uh, you know, the US sort of focused on Afghanistan and took its eyes off China and as a result China grew. Uh, I think in many ways the US uh, helped China's uh, emergence uh, as a sort of uh, counterfoil to Russia. Um, and. and and, and um, so, so I don't think you can just say that, oh, we were focused on Afghanistan and look at this thing that's happened. True. But the recognition in the U.S. is that uh, China is the other uh, global superpower. I mean, it might not be where the U.S. is yet, um, but it's getting there. Uh, economically, it's getting there. Militarily, it's getting there. Um, so uh, that is a concern. Now, Clearly, the U.S. foreign policy, if it takes a shift towards China, I, I think in some ways uh, it will help India because, right, I mean, the U.S. sees India as a natural counterfoil to China. So, so I think um, India should become their natural ally. And, and I think it makes sense. Right? You know, you, the unfortunate thing about the war on terror was that the U.S. is uh, biggest ally in this was Pakistan, you know, and, and I don't need to say anything more about this. Uh, you know, of all the travesties in the world, you know, I can't think of something which is 
uh, more unfair and more ironic than this, right? Uh, whereas India would be a natural ally uh, to the US, both countries are democracies, there is a lot of alignment in terms of economic interests. Um, so uh, that, you could, you, you'll probably start seeing that change, there'll be more of a focus on the Indo-Pacific, uh, where again, um, India has an important role to play, uh, Quad, uh, which Quad, is yeah. weak sort of block, uh, there will be more of a focus on that. Uh, so I think uh, the US focus from that perspective, does move away from uh, the Afghanistan, West Asia locus. Although, of course, uh, the U.S. will always have interests in Israel uh, for uh, obvious reasons. I mean, th this is a very, very long relationship. So that yeah. focus will be there. Uh, but I just think that uh, that focus moves towards China. And, and especially given China's uh, aggressive moves in the South China Sea, uh, with the country's wolf warrior diplomacy, um, I, I think um, the U.S. needs a counterfoil, it needs to build a sort of a global coalition which can sort of balance what is happening. And, and that's probably what you're going to see a lot of. Uh, I, uh, you know, I hope that's what happens because, uh, you know, I've been speaking to a few uh, uh, people in the United States, uh, uh, you know, people from policy think tanks, etc. And they are of the opinion that the Afghan exit, the Afghanistan exit, and they see that India as as a natural ally in as a counterpoint to uh, China, if that's where Biden wants to focus the foreign policy interests of the United States. But uh, they also say that it is a fact that the botched exit in Afghanistan, or the hurried and botched exit in Afghanistan, uh, has actually left Pakistan and China more strengthened um, in the region uh, as opposed to India. That is what true. is your take on that? As far as the regional states are concerned, especially the uh, West Asia hub, especially in the Afga Afpak region, um, Pakistan is a clear winner uh, because this is a country which, uh, for want of a better term, I'm going to resort to a cliche, uh, ran with the haves and hunted with the hounds, right? I mean, that's exactly mm -hmm. what uh, Pakistan uh, did uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, got a lot, uh, significant amount of military support from the U.S., got money from the U.S., financial support from the U.S., um, and uh, now is sitting pretty, uh, pretty much calls the uh, shots in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, although I'm sure over a period of time, the Afghan government, will, I mean the Taliban, uh, will also want to uh, sort of uh, establish their own uh, independence from Pakistan, so to say. Right? But, Hmm. Uh, Pakistan gave them refuge. Uh, many of their families are still in Pakistan. So it's, this is like a uh, umbilical relationship. It, 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 it's not going to go away any soon. And, and China, uh, through Pakistan, obviously, but, but also seems to have made its peace with uh, Afghanistan, uh, with the Taliban. And China, in, in a case like this, uh, will also buy its way out of trouble, right? which is right. typical. The Chinese approach to things. Uh, let, let us build all your infrastructure. Let us do this. I mean, you look at what they've done in Africa, uh, where they've just pumped billions of uh, dollars of money into infrastructure projects. Uh, that's the kind of thing that they will uh, do in Afghanistan. And, and uh, India is clearly uh, at a disadvantage because uh, we were investing in Afghanistan. We could have helped Afghanistan in significant ways. Uh, we, we do have. Uh, deep relations, we did have deep relationships with Afghanistan, but we don't have a relationship with the Taliban, and understandably so, uh, right? I mean, it's uh, India sees uh, many of the forces. Uh, you you have designated terrorists who are now in the cabinet. Right. right. By the Taliban. 17 of them in a 34-member. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. I, mean, I know we are, we are, our, you know, our editorial position has also been that we should talk to them, but, but you know, at the end of the day, we have to look at our own interests uh, and, and we have to look at our own security interests. Uh, uh, we've been at the receiving end before. Uh, so India is at a disadvantage and Pakistan is at an advantage in the region. But I think this is something that will still evolve over time and, and, and we'll, we'll have to see where it goes. Uh, evolve over time and see where it goes. And let's hope it goes in, the, in, in favor of India because, as you said, if the... Uh, foreign policy priority of Biden is to sort of uh, 
count uh, china in the region and in the world as a as a global superpower then india is of course very very important and especially the quad grouping also becomes increasingly important which the united states has been paying uh, a little more attention to uh, over the past several several years and months uh, going forward in terms of international recognition you said of course as far as india is concerned we we don't know uh, which way of the line to tread on uh, to talk to them or we perhaps know what we want to do but uh, our our security implications sort of are holding us back but what about china pakistan turkey if the other countries come out and recognize the taliban what option does india have tough question right i mean it, it's tough question for me i think it, 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 it's going to be a far tougher question for policy makers um, do we have to engage with them yes we have to engage with them um, should we just give them recognition with no strings attached i don't think so uh, will it be possible for us uh, to leverage granting recognition against something else uh, how well can we define our red lines uh, and, and say uh, this, this is what we expect from you and how how much do we trust them to sort of adhere to that i mean these are the sort of questions that uh, uh, the indian government will be wrestling with that as our foreign editor rajal rajko wrote in a piece there are right now a multiplicity of voices that are coming out of Afghanistan, out of the Taliban, uh, as far as the relationships with India are concerned. There, there's one senior leader who says, yes, we want good relationships with India. Uh, immediately, there's another senior leader who says, uh, oh, but Kashmir is an issue. Uh, and, and you know, the, uh, that is a reflection of the very, very heterogeneous nature of this group. These are like a, a bunch of guys, each one of whom has their own interests, who sort of like come together. The, there are multiple groups, and, and that's really what's happened. Um, so, uh, I think it's important for us to know who actually speaks for them, right? And what are they saying uh, for us to be able to frame a response? So, so right now, like I said, we are we are in a very initial phase where, uh, where we don't even know what their actual position regarding India is. Um, so we have to hope for the best, best. But but like I said, you know, we have to prepare for the worst. On oh, no, a being in a prayer, so to speak. And thank you so much, uh, Sukumar, for giving us that insight uh, today. And we will come keep coming back to you, uh, our viewers, with more. Stay tuned to the space for developments as they happen. Thank you for watching Hindustan Times.